secret location in Hollywood. It's Flash Friday. I came for the beer and the bitches. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Flash Friday on the Tom Like a Show. Headlights on, everybody. If you're heading home from work or wherever you're heading home from, turn the headlights on. And, ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, show them your cans. Let's see what you got, girls. Let's get a good look. We flash you, you flash us. If you see a nice pair of cans, call and report to me immediately. Please. 1-800-5800-TOM is that telephone number. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. Just call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Demetria on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Tom, what do you have against women? Uh, my uh, manhood, usually. Excuse me? Uh, my member. You're a member for men? Never mind, dear. Uh, I have nothing against women as a gender. Uh, I, I, as I always say, nothing against women. Everyone should own one. Well, why are you always putting women down and talking crazy about well, women? Well, give me some examples. I will deal with each individually. Go ahead. Just like the, the caller before there, you said one, two, three strikes, she is out, and don't be bothered with her. And that, has not, her. that has nothing to do with disliking women at all. I mean, I guess just because you think you have money can go around putting women down. It's not. How is that putting women down? I'm simply saying, if a woman doesn't have sex with you within three dates, there's clearly no chemistry, so there's no point in uh, continuing. That's not true. It that's is not, true. Wow. Well, okay. Give me give me a reason why that's true. Because uh, when a woman feels chemistry, or when a woman is hot for a guy, she jumps into the sack with him. Example: Women when they meet famous people, uh, ball players, uh, uh, music stars, actors, whatever. They don't think you can have to go out with me thirty or forty times so I can see how I feel. They jump right into the sack, don't they? No, you got to give her some time. You got to give her some time. Well, I'm telling you, as uh, somebody at the lower end of the entertainment industry, I can tell you that women jump into the sack with me, and other guys have to wait. Well, how much are you paying the women? I don't pay them anything. You pay like you wait, don't you, Tom? I don't pay a thing. You don't pay for their time. Nothing. So why would a woman? Why should a woman jump in? Because women you? want to be around money, power, and fame. That's what women want. And that means that you're paying them for the. I'm not paying them a thing. I said they want to be around it. I didn't say they expect to be paid. Have you ever paid a woman? Never. Oh, just bought her nice expensive gifts. No, no. I, I actually, I've never done that. The closest I've ever come is uh, back in my stupider days when I was young. Um, I used to spend money on dinner and things, but uh, I found that was a complete waste of time, and I got better results when I bought them nothing. Oh, no. Dinner, no. A dinner no. That's, that's too cheap, Tom. No. Cheap. Nope. No, I'm telling you, the hotter chicks, the younger chicks, the nines and tens, uh, you don't have to take them anywhere, do anything. That's not true. Oh, yes, it is. I'm young, and I'm a nine and ten, and I expect it all. Darling, it says here on the screen you're 42. That's not young. No, that's young. I'm no, 40. no, it's not young. 42, but I'm... That I'm, is middle-aged at best here. 20, I'm 42, and have a, like a 20-year-old. I Again, you're still 42. The birth certificate says 42, and that's what you are. And what does that have to do with anything? Oh, you don't be guys selling yourself as young. You're not young. You're middle aged, and as a result, you expect men to wine you and dine you. They wine and dine, Gucci, Louis, Prada, anything. Well, there you go. Out. But I'm telling you, the 19 and 20 year olds, they don't ask for any of that stuff, and they're younger and hotter. Because 
because they don't know what they're doing. They still wear I don't care ideas. if they know what they're doing. I couldn't care less. But I, what do you If I want to hire someone who knows what they're doing, I'll hire a hooker. Well, and what's wrong with a hooker? Uh, I didn't say something's wrong with a hooker. I personally don't believe in paying women to have sex when so many hot chicks give it away for free. You're going to pay one way or the other time. No, have no, yes, no. Have, yes, and in fact, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because women will have sex with you as a, uh, as what we call a loss leader. Like in the supermarket business when they sell six pack of Coke for 99 cents to get you into to, to, to the supermarket. And then you get in and, you know, a rump roast is $86 a pound. That's what women do. They will give you a little bit of sex in exchange for the down the line figuring you're going to spend money on them. The trick is you have sex with them and then when they expect you to spend money on them they say, what am I, crazy? No. And they go, well, fine. You're not getting any. You say, fine. I'm moving on. I didn't want to be with you anymore anyway. And you move on to the next. That's why you get your tip before anything goes down. You, you pay up front and you pay like you wait. Well, I tell you, Donnie, most women don't think that way like oh. you. You're just, you're just a hooker without a business cut. I don't need a business cut. And I'm not a hooker. Oh yeah, you're a hooker. Yes, no, you tell are. Me how. You're a whore. Uh, because you expect because you expect to be bought things, you expect to have money spent on you before you'll have sex with anybody. That is prostitution. Well, that's okay because you you're paying. For Again, I if, if you're a prostitute, I don't have a problem with that. I'm a libertarian. I think I think prostitution should be legalized. Uh, women like you do it legally anyway. Uh, so uh, I have no problem with prostitution for the people who want to pay for it. But I don't pay. And the guys who listen to the show, they don't pay either. They pay two birds on a feather. No, they don't. And they certainly don't pay a 42-year-old. I'll tell you yeah. that right now. 42-year-olds yeah. are on Blue Light Special. You do not have to pay full price for 42-year-olds. What is a Blue Light Special? Have you ever been to Kmart, dear? No. I have because I'm cheap. Oh, see, that's why... You just get the women that are wet behind the ears don't know anything. I don't care if they're wet behind the ears. You, know, you know who made them wet behind the ears? I'll tell you what, I've got good aim. You have good aim? Yes. Well, I guess if you, if you pack in shorts, you have to have good aim, huh? I, I don't even know what that joke is supposed to mean, dear, but I'll just tell you this. <laughs> I will tell you this. Uh, I get young, hot chicks, and I don't spend a penny. Yeah, right. Huh? And you've heard guys call in thousands of them who've called in here and said that the same thing happens to them. The less they spend, the more sex they get. Oh, I, I've never been like that. Like seven of them never have and never will. I don't care. At 42, I can't believe that somebody would pay full price for that. Full price, full price, top-notch price. Hooker, hooker, hooker. That's all right. That's all right. I can be a hooker, 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 but... That's I mean, what you are. You're probably packing, what, like an inch or so? Well, darling, again, you're a hooker. That's okay. Because okay. people like you pay. I like them big, so you pay like you weigh. Well, and then, then, darling, uh, then uh, <laughs> even then, if somebody uh, meets your standards, why should they have to pay? Because they do. Well, again, they're idiots. And if any of you guys have any doubt about it, call in, and I will tell you how you do not have to pay old bags like this, uh, aging hookers, uh, for a thing. Uh, you can get it for free. And there's plenty of them out there who will give it to you. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, Tom. You yeah, have yeah, paid. yeah, 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 yeah. You have paid, and you will, and I know you have. I haven't, and I won't. Okay. Well, you, so you won't date a 42 year old woman, right? Why would I? Because you don't want to pay. I know. I'm definitely not going to pay. I'll tell you that right now, dear. Jesus. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Aaron is listening to the online stream in Vancouver, British Columbia. On the Tom Likas show. Hello. Mr. Likas. Yes, sir. How are you doing, sir? Great. Great, yeah. You got nice weather out there, too. It's about 30 degrees damn near. Well, yeah, we should point out you're talking Celsius because you're in Canada. Yeah, that's correct. I can't convert it. I'm not that smart. 30 degrees is in the 80s what is somewhere. It I don't even know the formula. You double it and add 30 or 20 or something. It, I don't know. It, uh, it has like to do with 5 eighths plus 32 or 8 fifths minus 32. It's something like that. Nothing special. Nothing to need to worry about. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to call in. This is um, a couple of days away from my birthday on Canada Day here. I'll be 26. Uh-huh. And I'd have to say this is probably the best birthday present I ever got in my whole life. What is that? To talk to you and call oh, in. Oh, love that. Happy birthday. Thank you, sir. And, um, yeah, I've been listening to you on the Internet through some friends of mine who got me on you about six months ago. I didn't really pay too much attention. I said, you know, I know that. I don't need to listen to this guy. I pretty much think and know the same things he's talking about. 
but you know you can't you don't know everything but you know you did enlighten me quite a bit and, uh, and uh some of the other episodes i listened to i was just like you know i i'm this is better than anything i've ever heard i like this guy so i like, love that yeah so uh the one i really liked was when uh the ford the ford uh talk with the guy there about the auto strike and how they wanted 30 buck an hour that one was really good yeah. And uh oh let's see oh there's been a couple a couple others but I'm on the spot and I never talked to anybody of this way on the phone and uh, on a big guy like you so I'm trying to gather all my thoughts Relax Aaron it's just you and me All right bud and uh I'd like to say hello to everybody out there too that's listening in uh in uh BC or Canada There we go So uh and there are many there are many because we were once on a radio station in Vancouver Are you we were, and uh, after about six months on the air, the CRTC got wind of what we were doing, and they shut that baby down. Well, yeah, who, who would want to listen to this beautiful wealth of knowledge that you got, right? Well, exactly. So, uh, of course, uh, the, what, what the CRTC can stop is the Internet. Mm hmm And uh, many, many, many listeners in Canada listen over the Internet. Yeah, you ever thought about going uh, digital, HD, you know, getting your own little show on the satellite there that people got to subscribe to? Well, have? keep in mind, the CRTC controls what you get on the satellite also. Yeah. I mean, are you guys getting Howard Stern? Uh, i only seen him twice. I haven't seen him on the air for like five years, but I yeah. just kind of crack up a little bit. Well, the thing is, I I don't think, I'm, I'm guessing, uh, I don't think that they allow him on the, uh, even the satellite. Oh, really? Scott, not bad, eh? Yep. Yeah, from what I remember, it was pretty uh, touchy, touchy. Some of it's the not stuff. the show's gotten bad; it's CRTC that's got bad. Oh, I mean, oh, so they govern what the heck you guys can do. Sure. Well, Howard Stern was taken off the air because of complaints from the CRTC. That's how uh, he, he was on in Montreal and Toronto, and then got pulled. So, uh, but on Sirius and XM and stuff, is he got? Do you guys have your own thing on there too? Both no, here, we don't. Howard is on. Howard's on Sirius. But I, again, uh, I do know that uh, unlike satellite radio in the United States, where the government keeps hands off, uh, I do believe the CRTC gets their fingers into satellite radio as well. Oh, geez. Okay. So, so all those Canadian content laws and everything, you're yeah, stuck that, with it. I wanted to move down in the States, but it's so bloody hard to uh, get a, uh, what do you call it now, green card or something? Or yeah, a green card. Yeah. I can't even get down there to buy a house for 150 grand out where you are or Palm Springs or something. i got to yeah, price so price. broad to go halfers with it on for half a million to have a backyard around here. It's ridiculous. Yeah, and then, of course, then you have on it with her, and who knows what happens there. Yeah, and, you know, I'm 26, or coming up 26, like I said earlier, and... Uh, Brought up by my dad and my brother, who's a couple years younger than me, since we were about 12 and 10, mom walked off and uh, married some guy from her work, VP, uh, out in West Bend, uh, $6 million house on the ocean. I, I don't blame her, but, you know, I didn't know that back in the day, but now I know what it's all about, being a, growing up a little bit and, you know, listening to the old man and doing experiences myself, and then guys like you come along that actually know what you're talking about, and, you know... I got this girl right now that I've been seeing for a year and a half, but I've wanted to break it off with her. Like, every three months, I want to break up with her, but I just keep coming back. And Why do you keep coming back? I don't know. I guess people say because I love her, but, you know, she's got a good family, which I look for because I didn't have much of one with mom leaving and that. And, you know, she's a little bit away. She's about 300 clicks away from me, so that's a good three-hour drive. So Are you looking to get married? Uh, no. no. Well, you in the beginning and you know the last six months you know i've kind of hesitant too because of how things have been but you know just it seems like she won't let me get away she won't let me get away i think she won't let you get away it's very uh, easy to get won't away let me out of her life she's well, on her way here right now i think she texted me about 10 minutes ago and i'm like oh great a while, but you don't have to answer the door you don't even have to be there my buddies here that did this for me and they're all entertaining her and i'm out here your buddies did that to you for my truck Wait a minute, your buddies did that to you? Do they know how you feel? Oh, yeah. I, I'm one of these guys that, well, what did my relative call it? My godfather up north, he said, you call an ace a spade or something like that. Whatever that means. Maybe you need to tell them you do not want to see her anymore. Yeah, I do, but then the act that she puts on is so bloody professional. I'm telling you, I've never experienced it in my life, and you just can't say no. It feels like she's... Oh, I can say no. And, 
You'll never fall off the face of the earth, and she'll put on a little sob story. And oh, I I can say no. Believe me, I've I've had these women who uh, won't go away. I've had women I can't get to leave my house when they when they live in my house. Well, when I try to leave her place, she hangs on to me and won't let me go. Sometimes, depending upon how the weekend well, went. But, well, but maybe you shouldn't be going over there anymore. But there's sometimes I want to stay there, and there's sometimes I just like, oh, I got to get out of here. I can't stand her anymore. So, but, well, but why 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 don't you just find other chicks to nail? Because I've never really been that kind of guy since day one. I never really had that much luck. I'm not the ugliest guy in the world. I'm not but Aaron, the Aaron, you know I love you to death, but you're you're, women you're, you're you're too much of a. Back, so I know once I get in bed with them, if they didn't like me for all of these other reasons, they certainly want. The you're sex. you're too That's much of a fun. nice guy. That's your problem, Aaron. Well, not nice, but once you know, once you get you know, once once I get serious with somebody, things change. It's not like. But I'm why do you there. need to get serious with anybody? Well, exclusive, I should say. Why do you need to be exclusive with anybody? I don't have a lot of time to tell you the truth, and it's just, I guess I've gotten comfortable too, you know? So it's not love, it's convenience. No, it, it, it's, I'd say it's 50 50, man. Honestly, it's 50 50. She's like an 8.5 out of 10. You know, she's, I got her getting trimmed. She's looking great. She's she's like 120 right now. She's Is like, she a Vancouver 8.5 or a Calgary 8.5? Van, I'd say Van, Van 8.5. Really? Yeah. yeah, and you know. Uh, every time we go out walking around, there's, everybody's looking, guys look at her, no matter if they're her age or 50, I catch them looking at them all the time. So I know I got to keep her and look wise. It's just that, you know, you can't change somebody, I guess. She doesn't do everything the way that I would expect it to be done, how I'd like my partner, you know, to be. But what, what is it, now, what, what is it that she is. doesn't do? What is it she doesn't do? Oh, there's just so many things. It's just that the age difference, hey, she's five years younger. That's the problem. That's a problem? Oh, yeah. But she'd say, you know, like, oh, my God, like, anybody would kill to have a girlfriend five young years younger than them. I'm going to be the hot one that they all want when we get married, you know, and all this. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cute, funny. Yeah, you probably are right. But at the end of the day, that don't really matter to me that much. Now, Aaron, uh, I, you told Dean that uh, you're about to leave town. Is that right? Yeah, I'm a contractor welder. I used to work for one of the mega line companies out here in British Columbia called BC Hydro. And uh, I decided to leave them because I was going crazy. They're uh, just kind of being at a standstill and the way those big companies work. And now I'm just a cowboy, right? So I went on my own and started my own welding company a couple of years back. And uh, actually, my first year out on my own, Tom, I, I said I wanted to be a rig welder. I wanted to make 100 buck an hour. I wanted to go up north. And I did my income tax, and I came out $100,075. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Five years old. I got every ticket in the world, and uh, I work today. Does she get in the way? Does she get in the way of you, though? No, um, I met her when I went up to visit my brother, and she had a guy friend at the time. This is what uh, this is the kind of girl I think she is. Because you told Dean that she's mad because you're leaving town. Well, yeah. When I went to Alberta, I worked ten hours a day for ten uh, uh, ten days straight, and then I had four off, right? And they'd fly me fly fly me, so I'd fly in the Kelowna because that's where she is. Instead of flying home, and I'd spend the four with her, and so, you know, one time or t I escaped to come down here. <laughs> I could call it escape, yeah, <laughs> to come back to see all the escape. boys. Escape. But I grew up with them for my whole life, so you know. Escape. Meant... That doesn't sound good, but you're using words like escape. I know, but I kind of like it though a little bit. You like having to escape. Yeah. Well, that feeling, you know, it's. I know it's not the time. To, you know, I. That's you like the, the feeling of being trapped and then and then freed. Yeah, but she then she'd say, "Oh, I, oh, I hope I'm not, you know, like smothering you or getting like, you know, like making you feel like you got to escape from me." She'll Did you ever imagine what it would be like to live with her? Yeah, I already have. Yeah, I have you've imagined that? Yeah, it'll I, be only good for about three days of the week, and the other four, I'd want to wring her neck. Now you know, you know what it's going to be like. Okay, picture this. Okay, it's Saturday evening, seven o'clock. And suddenly, well, the music starts. And then the vacuum cleaner comes off. All right? Yeah. She starts vacuuming right about that time. You know what I'm saying? You know that's how she's going to be. Well, that, are, you talk, that, are we talking like moving in together or are we talking married? Either one. Well, vacuuming no, think, begins, vacuuming begins Saturday night at 7. Anybody, if anybody doesn't vacuum on a Saturday night at 7 in my house, so oh, Aaron, I wouldn't make it that far if that was the case. I'm you telling you. that kind of gal. You know? But you that, know how you were talking, I kind of lost <laughs> my uh, train of thought there, but 
where you're going. But you know, I, all you have to do is play the Canadian going. national anthem, and they all lose their train of thought. That's what happens. Because it's not about them. I'm telling you, it's not about them until you move in with them, and then it's about them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, you know, I do try and try my best to be there, like in a nice, good boyfriend type way, because I kind of do want somebody. But like I said, the work that I do, and now I'm going away to Northwest Territories, and this is 28 days straight, and then I get two weeks off. Right. So and she's, she's giving you a hard months, time. No, she's giving you a hard days. time about it, right? Oh yeah, I'm like, well, you know what we'll do, hun? We'll go down to the sex shop because she doesn't have one—a vibrator, dildo, or whatever toy that these girls use these days. But I said, we'll go down there. We'll, I won't be mad if you buy one a little fatter, a little longer, or do want one just like me. We'll go down there. We'll pick it out. You know what? I'll even buy it for you if it shuts you up because I don't want to hear about it. Like I'm going away to work. I'm going to make seventy grand in four months and take like three months off and put around here. And if a job comes up, a job comes up. I don't have to wake up at like five o'clock every morning. And that's like, not good enough for her, is it? No. And then I'm like, yeah, you won't let me go away and do this so that when I come home, I can stay with you. You know? Oh like, my oh, God! You're already asking for permission for God's sake. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Most important, it's daylight savings. The lights are on and no chick should be home. That's right. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in on this Flash Friday. Are your headlights on? Are they? I think I'm hearing the radio station feedback in my headphones here. There it goes. It's gone now. Yes. Okay. Let's continue with your telephone calls here. Anything goes. Anything at all. Let's say hello here to Tom on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Great. Uh, listen, I was just wondering, uh, just before you told some other caller that they shouldn't be taking business advice from Donald Trump, uh, when he's been wildly successful at it, no matter how he's done it. I Wait, mean, no matter how he's done it. You, that's like saying Willie Sutton's been wildly successful at it, no matter how he's done it. Well, uh, regardless, but I'm saying... Not regardless, I think that's a pertinent point. Well, my point is, though, he's been successful, so... He probably has some advice he could offer people, right? I mean, uh, advice, well, right? Yeah, yeah, put it this way. If he was honest and he said, I use the bankruptcy laws to become a billionaire, uh, fine, as long as he says that. Well, that's how all businessmen people do, is they use the laws to their advantage. Yeah, but it's, it, you know, it's very different uh, to be Oprah Winfrey, who became a billionaire by providing a product people want and exploiting the hell out of it, and using the bankruptcy laws to start businesses you don't know how to operate, like the casino business, and when they start going in the tank, just filing for bankruptcy. It, it's two different worlds. Yeah, well, okay, but that's besides the point. My no, it point is, is, no, 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 it is the point. Well, no, but the point is, He's been successful at it, so maybe... Uh, well, again, just because somebody has a lot of money doesn't mean that their method of doing business is the way you should do business. No, but my point, though, is he's been successful at it, and and he's offering advice. And how many times, have his, how many times have his businesses filed for bankruptcy? I don't know. It doesn't... It doesn't well, I think when he does a seminar, he should though. point out how many times he has filed bankruptcy. How many times? That doesn't matter. He's it does winning. matter. And be, when, he, when, when Donald Trump is having seminars tell people how to get rich, why doesn't he say, just keep filing for bankruptcy? Get, borrow as much money as you can and then don't pay any of it back. Well... If that's how he and you'll be covered. Well, he I should know. tell people that's what he's doing. It, if, for my money, that's a legal way of fleecing the public. That's how, in my opinion, Donald Trump got rich. Okay, but that was as opposed to creating a product people want and selling the hell out of it. Okay, what I'm saying though is, 
You tell people not to take advice from a successful That's, businessman. I tell people not to yes. take advice from a businessman who, in my opinion, made billions of dollars by borrowing money to start businesses he knew nothing about and then uh, not being able to pay the money back, so using the bankruptcy laws to protect himself from, from ruin. That's what, what he did. Think? He it's does not teach people. Though, right? When he's on The Apprentice, he's not there telling people how to file for bankruptcy. No, but, he, but he's been... He, he, he funny, he avoids this subject every time how he became a billionaire comes up. He avoids this subject. Do you notice that? But the point is... Do you, does he ever bring that up? I don't know. Don't you don't, think he don't should? Really don't you think that the blind really followers of this guy ought to have the facts? They ought to know that part of the reason he has money is because he has used the bankruptcy laws to protect himself from his creditors. Creditors he borrowed money from and was not able to pay back. I understand that. Don't you think that's relevant? Uh, no, it's not. You don't relevant think it's relevant. That I wanted to make. You though. don't. Th I don't. Uh, that's not the point. When you tell me he's been successful, successful? How? Willie Sutton was very successful. He made hundreds of thousands of dollars. So should he be giving financial seminars if he's still alive? How about know. how I about really, the, how about the people who ran Enron? Uh, should the people who ran Enron be giving uh, seminars on how to become rich? Uh, I think they could probably just just like the guy in that that movie with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio who used to kite the checks and stuff. He he eventually ended up working for the FBI. Didn't Do you he? think people like that ought to be giving financial seminars? Possibly, yes. Well, they, and do you think people are smart? Do you think people are smart to go to financial seminars hosted by people who did not make money the way they think? They think that somebody created something of value and then sold it to the public. But that's not what these people do. Okay, well, but that's not the point that I wanted to make in the first place, though. Well, but you keep using Donald Trump as your example. Get off Donald Trump and make a point. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, my point was... Why should people take your advice regarding marriage when you have been... I don't give advice on that. marriage. Well, see, uh, you, know, you know nothing. Because I specifically say on this program that this is not a program about giving marital advice. I don't advise people to get married. No, no, and I have said, I have said specifically married. on this program that I don't give marital advice because I got divorced four times. Where were you when I said that repeatedly on this program? You're advising people not to get married. Correct. Okay. So that well, that's that's like saying, everybody who listens know, to I what I'm saying. Drove, everybody who listens to what I'm saying has heard me say I don't give marital advice. Okay. But you advise people not to get married. That's correct. But I don't advise them on how to fix a marriage. That would be hypocritical, and I don't do it. Yeah, well, if somebody got in a car four times and tried to drive and crashed four times, and they told you, Listen, I'd recommend they, they I'd recommend they, I, yes, you know what? If someone crashed the first four times they drove, I'd recommend they stay away from driving. Hire a driver. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, there. You, yeah, 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 yeah. The bad person is is blaming it on the car, saying the car is dangerous. I'm not blaming. Marriage is bad. Marriage is so bad. There is no benefit to time. men to get married. There is no benefit to men to get married. Uh, well, you can debate that point till you're blue in the face. No, there's nothing to debate. There's nothing a man can get from marriage that he can't get from not being married. Oh, but that's not the the, the point. Yeah, is, but no, 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 no. That is, is the point. That is my married. point. Now and let's get to what my point is, and that is the right. point I am making when I say these things. That's my point. My point is there's no benefit to men to sign a contract and put half or more of all of their lifelong wealth at risk. There is no benefit. Well, just because you don't see it. Doesn't mean what is. is the what is it? Tell us. Tell us all what the benefit I, 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 is. Tell each, us. Each person. Tell us what it is. is. Tell us the benefit. Tell us the benefit. The benefit tell us the benefit. tell us the benefit to you. <laughs> you can't, can you? Because there are what, no the benefits. Benefit to me? Yeah. What's the benefit? The benefit to me is that I've had a loving wife for twenty-five years. You could have had her without signing a contract. Possibly. 
But I right. did sign the contract. But I tell people, don't, don't sign, sign the contract. And that's it. It's simple. And just because one guy survived when he fell out the 16-story window doesn't mean everyone else should jump out the window. Yeah, yeah, I know. I've heard that one before. And it's a fact. <laughs> but what my point is, you've yeah. been... You've been. I don't. No. You know. No more. No more repeating. Your. Your. You, we've already heard your material. I've already responded to it. You need new material to say on the air. Can't keep repeating the same crap over and over. Tom, like this. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. So, for you, you only get from woman you sex, and that's it. Yes, because that's what women are good for. Oh, my God. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yes, from Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show at one 800 800 top Flash Friday. Wide open telephones. Yep, baby. Let's say hello here to, uh, oh, Carlos. Let's try Carlos on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Carlos. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Pretty good. Hey, uh, um, what do you think about uh, all the European players that are, that, are, that are playing with the Lakers? Well, I know what you're going to say about that because we've had this conversation. How about uh, that? You're gonna say you're gonna say that, but uh, nobody ever said Tony Parker was soft. And uh, well, 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 like how you say, there's exceptions to every rule, but most. No, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you more than one. Tony Parker would be one. Manu Ginobili would be another. But uh, Manu Ginobili, uh, although he is from Argentina, he played his basketball in Italy. Well, it's because I, I listen to Jim Rome sometimes in the morning, and uh, he, he's been. You're one of the that, few. Uh, what's that? You're one of the few. <laughs> uh, but uh, he said, uh, there's rumors coming around that Ron Artest is coming to L.A. and they're going to get rid of Odom. And I wanted, I wanted your opinion on that. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ron Artest comes with his own baggage, as you know. Right, right. Well, that's what they were saying, that Joe Jackson thinks that he can control Ron Artest, uh, just like how he did Rodman back in the in the 90s, when, you know, when he was winning. So, right. Uh, and how old is Ron Artest now? You know what? I don't. I don't really know, but he must be getting up there. I I imagine he is, which wouldn't bother Phil Jackson, but it bothers me. Uh, look, I I definitely think that Lamar Odom, for what they pay him, uh, does not produce uh, what oh. they need to get at that position. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, he, he's a, he's been he's been with the Clippers, and they've, they've been saying, oh, he's so he can do this, he can do that, but he hasn't done it. Well, he choked. I mean, uh, even yeah. when he played well during the season, when it came down to all the marbles, he choked. Yeah, I mean, uh, but by the way, so did Vladimir Rodmanovich, in my opinion. Who did? Vladimir Rodmanovich. Oh, that guy's that guy's a stiff. I, I don't even know why they got that guy out there. Uh, you know, he was a stiff with the Clippers, and he was a stiff with the Seattle SuperSonics, and oh, he's yeah, a stiff yeah. now. Yeah, but uh, I, I don't know. I don't think I don't think Kobe's ever going to win with with Kobe being the number one guy. Kobe's just too he's too selfish. Well, uh, we don't know that yet. I, I, again, we don't know what would happen if uh, Andrew Bynum comes back and plays like he can. We don't yeah. know. Yeah, uh, I guess I guess I could see that, but I, I, I think Kobe's not gonna. He's not a. He's not a leader. Everybody's trying to compare him to Michael Jordan, and that's far from from. Uh, from now, close. you know Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan uh, was the leader of that team, and uh, what did he win? Six championships, Jordan. Yeah, six. Yeah. yeah. But, Kobe's, um, Kobe's got a ways to go. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what he does. Well, we'll uh, see what he learned from this season. What, what, was, what was that? We will see if he learned anything from this season. Yeah, I will see when, he, when Bynum comes back. But, um, hey, can you take me out, uh, uh, Bill O'Reilly Stone? I can certainly do that. Thank you. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! F***ing thing sucks! <laughs> I love that every time I hear it. 1-800-58... Oh, that's right, don't forget, uh, Factor for Kids on Amazon.com. That's right, thank you, Art. Thomas, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hello, son. 
Hey, man. I've been listening to you for a couple of years. First time caller. Yes. And uh, I'm having a really huge girl problem, man. Oh, what kind of problem could you have? You're only 21 years old. What kind of problem could there be? Uh, I've been with this girl for three and a half years. Oh, well, there's your problem right there. Yeah. Why'd you and do I'm that? Well, see, I, I got with it before I started listening to you. Oh, that's I would. Like, that should have the day you tuned in. Should have the day you dumped that bitch. Yeah. Um, well, there's actually like that's the first thing I want to talk. about. Second thing, it's coming up. Like I'll just talk about that a little while. But uh, yeah, I just you know she's been she's been playing like a lot of mind games with me. And uh, last Friday, this guy called in. He was kind of in the same position as I was, and you know he got like two callers calling, giving him him advice like how you were, and that just kind of like you know made me feel like more like. Okay, I'm gonna push her away, kind of. But then, you know, it just like this whole past week, it's for two weeks. She's been giving me like a lot of hell, a lot of crap. She's been trying to get with me, trying to break it up with me, trying to get back with me, and then you know we get back together, and then she breaks up, and then like you know she. But but, but, the, but the fact that you tolerate it is the reason she keeps doing it. Yeah, but like yeah, it's like she's like my weakness because we've been together for so long. You know, well, like, yeah, but you're a pussy, and you need to man up, and you need to realize that you could be banging every chick out there. Uh, but you decided to uh, lock yourself down with one, and she's taking advantage. You know, she's a monopoly now. You know, you know, if if somebody buys up all the businesses in town, uh, what happens to the price of the item that that company is selling? I don't know. You don't know? No. All right. Let's say Coca Cola bought Pepsi Cola. Yeah. Okay, and let's say they also bought uh, Royal Crown Cola and every other cola, and they're the only sellers of cola. What would happen to the price of cola? You go up. Right. So when your girl uh, got you to give up all the competing providers of sex, what is she doing to the price of sex? It's going up. Now she's going to treat you like crap because she has a monopoly. Yeah, but... I mean, you know, it just, it's like, you know, I listen to your show, and then, you know, I get, like, very, like, I get this really good, positive, like, bad guy kind of, like, uh, attitude, you know, like, yeah, I can do whatever I want, and then it's just like, you know, show's over, and then, you know, then I, I end up getting a text message from her, and then she starts, you know, like, kind of, like, whining to me, saying that she misses me, and then, you know, we start talking, and then she come, like, turns into, like, this completely whole different person, like, you know, she doesn't want to talk to me, like, the next day after we have, like, a good conversation, you know Who what I mean? Cares? That's my point. Again, you're going to sit here and try to get me to sign off on you having a girlfriend, and then try to give you some suggestions to how you can sweet talk her into being the way you want her to be. I don't specialize in that. I have a zero tolerance policy for game playing. Zero. Yeah. Zero. I know that. And that's why chicks don't play games with me, because they know they are on thin ice. It's kind of it's it just it's just hard, man. You know, just well like, it's because to you're because you're still a little boy who started dating your girlfriend when you were not even an adult yet, mm -hmm. and so you don't know what it's like to be a man yet. Yeah, and a man I says, "I'm not taking your crap. Have a good night," and that's it. You slam the phone and you're done. Yeah, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna have to start doing it. You know, it's kind of happy that I called you. I've been trying to you know talk about this for a while. But um, besides that, you know, I was listening to you on, uh, I think it was on Tuesday, when uh, we got all the hate mail and all that crap right. going on. Yep. Uh, there was that, uh, I've been trying to email you about this, and there was, like, there was that one guy about Lacey Peterson. Right. Uh, do, do you have him up for, like, you know, being taken out, I'm, I, I'm guessing, Bay Area style? You don't have that? Uh, oh, I think we do, as a matter of fact. Yeah, take me out that guy style. Wait, Bay wait, that style. guy style? Bay Area style. Oh, you want to be oh, taken wow. out that guy style? I don't know. I don't. I don't know what. It's uh, we, we, all right, we are working on that. We don't have that one ready yet, but we are working on it. Yeah, take me out that way, baby. Uh, like I said, we don't have it ready yet, <laughs> but we are working on it, and we will be taking people out that way. You call back, and we'll do it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Uh, let's see, real fast here, Steve on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Steve. Hey, Professor. Hey. hey. How's it going? Great. I, I just heard something. I caught part of it on the news, but I had to call and tell you about it, and I'll bet you it, it just fits right in with the rules of like is 101. Um, I heard that the material girl, Madonna, is in the process of a divorce right now, and there's all this heated debate because there was no prenup, and it looks like the guy may get a juicy settlement. Oh, if that's true, are you kidding me? God bless America. Hope it happens.
Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.